Are you a first time home buyer and you're feeling overwhelmed or unsure of where to start? Well, I'm here to help you so you can have confidence and ease when purchasing your first home. Here's my home buyer guide of the essential steps you need to take to buy a home in 2023. My name is Ellie and I've been a realtor in Northern Colorado since 2016. I've helped a ton of first time home buyers. And if you guys find any value in this video at all, please give me a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel if you want to keep up with Colorado real estate and lifestyle. So the first step is to secure your financing. You're going to make sure you have money for your down payment and for closing costs. And contrary to popular belief, you don't have to have 20% down to purchase a house. It can vary depending on what loan you get. So for instance, if you have a conventional loan, you need 3% down. If you have an FHA loan, it's 3.5% down. Closing costs are gonna be about two to 3% of the final purchase price of the home. Keep in mind there are down payment assistance programs and you can actually ask the seller to help with closing costs in the form of a seller concession, but just talk to your lender about these specific details. Which brings me to, you need to talk to a lender. And ideally you want to talk to multiple lenders so you can shop around, see their different rates, see their different programs they offer because not all lenders are created equal. If you're buying a new construction home for your first purchase, oftentimes they'll offer incentives for using their preferred lender, such as $5,000 toward closing costs. So this can be really helpful if you don't have a ton of money to bring for your down payment, but just keep in mind that this, this money could actually be tacked onto your loan and you could be paying interest long-term on it. So it might not be in your best interest. And it's just another reason why you really should be talking to multiple lenders just to make sure what situation is best for you. When you get your pre-approval letter, it's good for three months. And don't be worried if you are shopping around and having multiple pulls on your credit. If it's in the same industry, it actually won't negatively affect your credit. I have a great lender I'll link down below. He's qualified to do loans in multiple states, so feel free to reach out to him for assistance. The next step is to find a real estate agent to work with. As a first time home buyer, you're going to require a little more attention and care. So make sure you find an agent who's willing to really listen to your needs and help you through the process. Just because an agent's been around for a long time doesn't mean they're the best fit for you. So make sure that they're super helpful and that you actually like working with them. Keep in mind, you don't want to go through a seller's agent or a listing agent. Say you went to an open house, you love the home, and the agent there wants to write an offer for you. Well, keep in mind that they do not have your best interests in mind. They're representing their seller, their client. So it's best to have your own representation. And just remember that as a buyer, you don't have to pay for the commission. The seller pays for both the sell and the buy side, which is huge as a buyer. If you're looking to purchase a home in Colorado, I'm more than happy to help you and I'll link my contact information below. So feel free to reach out. I also have a lot of vetted agents around the country if you do need a referral. Now that you have your pre-approval letter and your agent, it's time to start shopping. Your agent's going to start to send you homes directly from the MLS. And I really recommend looking at those homes versus a site such as say Zillow this information is going to be a lot more up to date and accurate. It's really helpful to write a list of your needs versus your wants. And just keep in mind that for your first home, it's not going to be your dream home. So just think of it in terms of getting into the market and you probably will build equity. So that's a win-win. Now it's time to make an offer. There's a saying in real estate that is time is of the essence. And it's so true. If you find a home that you love, you might have to act really quickly, especially in the market here in Colorado. You want to get together with your real estate agent and develop a strategy to make a winning offer. A good real estate agent will call the listing agent and see if there are other offers on the table, because if you are going into a competing situation, it's going to be a lot different than if you don't have any competition at all. Once you submit your offer, the seller usually has about 24 hours to respond. So they can either accept it, reject it, or counter it. Once your offer is accepted, it is a legally binding document. You're going to have to submit your earnest money usually around three days after you go under contract. And that's about 1% of the purchase price, at least here in Colorado. Once you're under contract, the next biggest step is the home inspection. 
I highly recommend you have a home inspection. And this is a cost that comes out of pocket for the buyer. It's usually around $400, but there could be other inspections you'd like to have done such as a radon test or a sewer scope. Keep in mind that this is one of the biggest points of contention in a deal between the seller and buyer. So cooperation is the name of the game. You want to think in terms of big versus little issues and just know that health and safety issues take precedent. Once you receive your inspection report, you have several options. You can decide to take the home as is. You could terminate the contract. You could ask for repairs. You can ask for a seller concession or you can renegotiate the purchase price. If you are asking for repairs, I highly recommend that you ask for a qualified contractor or professional to complete the work and you also should request receipts of the work done. Make sure that you stick to your deadlines in the contract for your inspection and for all deadlines of that matter. A good agent's going to help you do this and it will help you not jeopardize your earnest money. Next up is the appraisal. The appraisal is done for the bank to make sure that it's a good investment for them. It's not really for you, but you do have to pay for it. It's usually about $600 to $800 and this is an out of pocket cost before closing. There's three different scenarios when it comes to the appraisal. The first one is that it comes above the purchase price, which is awesome for you. And that just means that you're walking into instant equity. The second scenario is that it comes in at asking price, which is great too. If the appraisal comes in below the purchase price, you're going to have to negotiate a bit more. Let's say for example, the purchase price is $400,000 and the appraisal comes in at $390,000. You and the seller are going to have to determine what happens with that $10,000 difference. So the seller could either come down in price to $390,000 or you, the buyer, could come up $10,000 in price, um, up to $400,000, or you guys could meet somewhere in the middle. Another reminder, around the same time, you wanna make sure you have your home insurance. Your lender will remind you of this, but also you want to make sure you're keeping on top of all the documents your lender and the underwriter are requesting from you. So the next step is to get ready to close. You will receive a document called the Closing Disclosure, or CD for short, and legally you have to receive this document at least three days before closing. It's going to go over all of the financials of your loan, and it will have a very important figure, which is your cash to close, and this is the number, the amount that you need to bring to the closing table. So for your cash to close, you can either bring a cashier's check or you can arrange for a wire through your bank. Just keep in mind, if you are doing a wire, you want to make sure you talk directly to your title company over the phone. There is a ton of wire fraud going on and you need to protect your money. You want to set up your utilities for the new house and your real estate agent can help you get the contact information for those companies. Also, you're going to schedule a final walkthrough of the house. You want to make sure there's no issues that have come up and you want to make sure if you did ask for repairs that everything was completed and that you have your receipts. Also, don't forget to arrange your movers or friends and family if you're lucky to have someone help you. Now it's the day you've been waiting for. It's closing day. Congratulations. So depending on your state, you'll either meet at a title company or an attorney's office here in Colorado. As I mentioned, it is a title company. You want to bring with you an ID and a cashier's check if you have opted for that option. Your agent will be there as well as the title closer so they can help answer any questions that you have. But other than that, get your wrist ready. There are a lot of documents to sign. And once you're finished, you'll receive the keys and you, my friend, are a new homeowner. So there you have it. That is my ultimate buyer guide for purchasing a house in 2023. Thank you so much for listening. I really hope it was helpful. And just remember, if you are scared, it's totally normal. As long as you have a team of professionals to help you along the way, you'll be good to go. If you have any questions at all, feel free to comment below. Also, feel free to reach out to me if you are in Colorado, if you do need help buying or selling a house. Thank you so much.